there's one more SEAL team, it's in Virginia, but it's on a different base. It's not at Little Creek. It's, it's a, a different base, a bigger building, older, more experienced SEALs. Um, and we actually used to refer to them as the boys across the street. But that's known today commonly as SEAL Team 6, uh, or Naval Special Warfare Development Group. Whatever they call it, we knew the best of the best went there and they would go in first. I wanted to go in, so I went across the street. Now, the process of getting over to SEAL Team 6 is not as well known as the stuff on the Discovery Channel. Um, you, you need to get approved by your conventional team because you're going to represent them. You go over there and you sit in front of a board of about 14 senior enlisted and officers, and they grill you for a few hours on everything, like um, your tactics, your finances, your married life, how much you drink. Uh, of course, all this, there's even a guy sitting there with your service record open, going through all of your ribbons to make sure everything's in order and nothing is missing and nothing is there, is there that shouldn't be there. You finish that, and they take your, if you get through it, they take your picture and hand it to the actual operators that are there, and they look at your picture. Not your bio, just your picture, and it's all based on I know this guy, he's good, I don't know this guy at all, or I, I know this guy, we don't want him. Too many of these, and you're not welcome. You get through that, you go to the psychiatrist for about a day and a half for the psychological evaluation. Um, and that's actually funny, a part of that evaluation is, is like this 5,000 um, question multiple choice test with like, you know, one being never, three, seldom, and five always. And the questions have nothing to do with anything, and they're in no order at all. It's like, do you love flowers? Yes. Do you want to decapitate kittens? No. <laughs> And he goes, I actually asked the psychiatrist afterwards, what was the point of this test you just gave me? And he said, oh, we're not trying to figure out if you're crazy, we just want to know what flavor it is. <laughs> so from there, you do um, a really hard physical test, and if you pass all of these, you're invited to an eight-month selection course. Uh, and so this is in addition to, to the original SEAL training course. It's eight months long, it's a little bit longer than BUDS, it's different than BUDS, and I think it's harder than BUDS. And the reason that it's different is because now it's not, it's not recruits trying to become SEALs, now it's SEALs trying to get to the next level. So everybody there has the never quit attitude. Nobody's gonna quit no matter how far you make them run or swim. So what we have to do is come up with drills that can find people that can not just think but make decisions rapidly in a high stress environment. So we came up with drills that simulate combat stress in a training environment. So, it's all self-induced stress, but we're looking for the people that realize in life all stress is self-induced stress. That stress is a choice. That stress is a bag of bricks you carry on your shoulder, and you can carry it as long as you like, and you can let it weigh you down and slow you down, but any time you're choosing, you can put the stress down and leave it alone because it's doing you no good. It's just like guilt. It's, it's just like in combat, bravery is not the absence of fear, it's the ability to recognize fear, push it aside, and then do what I call actively participate in saving your own life. And don't just sit there and die of shame, waiting for someone else to rescue you. The analogy that I've come up with to describe stress is whether you're taking effective fire on a mountaintop in Afghanistan, or you're the man or the woman landing a jet on an aircraft carrier in high seas at night, or you're the person making latte at Starbucks um, at 7 a.m. on a Monday, there's a line around the corner. What those three have in common is they only feel the amount of stress they allow themselves to feel, and that no one has ever accomplished anything positive by panicking. That fear is healthy, but panic is contagious, and it will get you killed. <laughs>